So I, I went out to the hardware store to get a incandescent light bulb so that I could do a specific heat capacity lab. And now I went over here to Riverside, to the park, and I dug around in the bushes, sort of under a shrub, and I got myself a container here of soil. And I'm gonna take it back to the house so we can do a specific heat capacity experiment, which I'll show you when we move a little further. The first thing I'm gonna have to do is treat this soil a little bit. So I get back to the house and we'll take care of that. It's another gray day. This is March 31st, we're almost to April. So I got my soil sample here. And I said earlier that we needed to treat it. So the treatment is pretty straightforward. What I mean by that is we need to get it dry. So what I've done here is I've turned my oven on and I'm setting it to about 220 or approximately 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm at 215. 220 somewhere in there I don't have to be exact and what I'll also do is get out a cookie sheet and then we'll get some parchment paper Take a chunk of parchment paper. The oven's not that hot, so you don't have to worry too much about the parchment paper. And just lay that on there. And then I'm gonna dump this first over the sink. Here I'm back. And just sprinkle the soil on here. And then Flatten it out with a spatula. Spread it out. Hmm. There's organic matter in here and there's inorganic matter. You can see that maybe more organic stuff than we want. Dead material, probably some bugs in here. You can take some of the stuff out. Piece of root. Uh, oh, that's the sound of the oven getting ready, or is ready to reach its temperature. And they recommend that you leave your soil to dry for, you know, 24 hours. Or I'm not, but we're not, we're not really trying to determine how much water was in here. We're just trying to get it dry enough so that when we do our specific heat, you no know, more root material. We don't really need that. When we do the specific heat. experiment we don't have water in the soil which would would um, not give us good results so we want to get as much water out of this soil as possible and as much organic matter ideally I'd have like some kind of screen here but I don't have that this will this will do it's gonna give us more or less the idea. All right, so this goes into the oven. There's the oven, and here we go. Not brownies. Now they say, you know, 24 hours, but I'm gonna do it for about. I don't know. Let's see, four, five hours from now. So it's 3.30, at 8.30, we'll stop, okay? Get back to you later. Oh, wash your hands after you do that. Well, I just took this out of the oven. You can see it looks a lot different than it had before. It's much drier, and that's what we wanted. 
Probably still got a little soil, soil moisture in it, but probably good enough. What with a little bit of air for what we're gonna do. Probably grind it up a bit too. Probably take a mortar and pestle and grind it. You can see little shiny bits, which is the um, mica coming out. Can you focus for me? There we go. See those little shiny bits? That's the mica from the bedrock from which the soil is derived. So the soil is probably formed more or less in place in Riverside Park. All right. So next phase will be to grind this up a bit. So here's what I'm going to use to grind it up. And, uh, oh, and there's, there's Chica, always hungry. If she's not sleeping. Anyway, let me get the soil into here. So I got it in there. Got a little extra here in the, in the cookie sheet. Get that into the sink, wash that off. And then with this pestle, or the mortar, I think this is the mortar. Just do this for a few minutes to get the bigger chunks out. I may end up as well, um, you know, I'll hand pick out any stuff that's not obviously soil. So I'll stop, do this, and then show you what we get, all right? Well, you might be able to see that most of the grains now are pretty small. I mean, I can still grind some more, but remember, particles like this, we designate by size. The smallest size is clay. The next smallest size, or I should say the next bigger size, is silt. And then going up from silt, we go to sand. And from sand, we go to pebbles, and from pebbles, we go to cobbles, and from cobbles, we go to boulders. And if you look at page six of the reference table, you could see how these are distinguished by size in terms of um, millimeters or centimeters. And if I shake this now, you can see, again, little bits that aren't breaking down as much. There's a couple pebbles probably in here. That's actually a pebble. That's a rock that I'm not gonna break with this piece of wood. And then the shiny bits, which are mica, broke down, and then a few little bits of organic material. A little twig here. So we're probably not gonna have to do too much more grinding, but now we could use this in our specific heat capacity Lab. As I transfer this, you might be able to see how much, like tiny, how many tiny little particles float up into the air. Maybe you can see them here. I think you can. Those are the kind of microscopic particles of soil that often are blowing in the air and things that, well, obviously they're not microscopic, but they're things that I can't see. And if I look in here, you can see the, the dust that's left behind. I draw my finger through it, right? So that stuff that's in the air frequently um, making up what we remember are called aerosols. So can't get any good focus on this. It's a terrible camera. But aerosols, and again, this size particle, which is clay, could easily be lifted into the air, blowing in a dust storm traveling across the sea. 